Hello and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all well. Hope you've all had a great week and thank you for coming over and joining us for another video. Um, in this video, to carry on from the last video, Beginner's Guide to OBS. So we're going to move on to a little bit more, um, not in depth, but added a few more things to your stream to make it a bit more personal to you and your channel. So um, I'm going to go through a few things. It's going to be text, adding text, uh, scrolling text. So you can have a banner come across the bottom of your screen or the top of the screen you want. Um, adding uh, a logo or an inlay. And also I'm going to teach you how to do picture in picture. So you can have two uh, pictures in together. So you can have like overhead and tail or you can have overhead and intro, whatever you want to do. So um, we're going to go through that as well. So let's go. Jesus. Lights just fell down, made me jump. <laughs> so anyway, we'll leave that. Let's get over to OBS, and uh, I'll show you how to. I'll show you how to start those. So here we are with our blank OBS. Um, I've already created the uh, scene, which is banner. So we're going to add our source now. So what you want to do is you want to go up to text GDI. And then we can add in our text. So we'll call this uh, channel name. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to call it. So this gives us a list of stuff that we can do. First off, I'm going to put in my, uh, I'm going to do a banner so it scrolls across the bottom. So we're going to put in, uh, let's go, welcome to SK Crafts. So you could perhaps have this scroll across the bottom of your page or the top of your page while you're streaming so we can select our font i always like the georgia font in bold so we're going to go for that now in here we can change colors we haven't got to have white so let's choose our color so let's go for a yellow nice bright vibrant yellow so what we can also do we can also two-tone that so click on the graduate and we'll choose another color let's go for red Okay, now we've got a, a yellow fading into a red. Now on here you can you can um, do it so you get more prominent one color than you do the other. So you can mess about with that how you want it. You can also do it so on this one here you get it so it fades in from a different area. So that just moves it about. But I like it so it comes in from the bottom. So you can add a background if you want a background. I normally leave mine uh, blank because what happens is as it goes across the screen, you obviously can see what's behind it. So we really want an outline on that just to make it stand out a little better. So we're going to take this outline up to 10, which is just a nice size, I think. And then we can change the colors again. So we're going to change that to black so it stands out. And then that's about it in there. We don't really, you mean you can adjust other things, the uh, outline opaque, you can, oh, well, that's us either more prominent or less prominent, however you want it, you know, it's however you want it really, but us as far as I go with those settings. So we're going to okay it. So obviously now it's over the size of screen, um, but it's not moving. So what we need to do is we need to make it scroll. So what we're going to do now is left mouse click on our uh, text. Then we're going to right click to go to filters and then we're going to add the scroll uh, filter so scroll this brings up a list of what you can do um, if you want to just continue so it goes over and over and over again then um, you leave it on loop if you only want to go once and, and you have to manually turn it on and off then obviously click the loop button so there's it doesn't loop it so in here you've got two different two different um, bars, one for horizontal speed, one for vertical speed. We don't want it going up and down, so we don't want vertical, we want horizontal. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this to a rough speed. I always think between 50 and 60. Don't want it zooming across so people can't read it. But what you want to do is, because you don't want it um, to be continuous across the screen, we're going to give it a little bit of spacing. So we're going to close that. And now we're going to double left, double left click on our banner. And what we're going to do is the end of that, we're going to put some spaces at the end of that. And what that'll do, that'll just separate that welcome and the uh, SK Crafts. So now we should have a little bit of a gap between them. So as you can see now, that is scrolling 
gradually across our um, page. We can reduce it in size if you want to. You haven't got to have it that big. You can reduce it to size. You can move it to wherever you want to move it to. You can have it at the bottom, the top, wherever you want. And if you really wanted to get really um, fancy, you could have it going across the screen like that. If you want to get real fancy, but people want to be able to read it. So I think personally, you're better off just leaving it, leaving it across the bottom. So let's put it back down to zero. And then it should just go. So that's your banner. As easy as that, just to do a welcome or if you're doing a giveaway or you want to shout people out, easy way just to put a banner on the bottom there. Again, add it as a, uh, a scene because what you can do then is you can add that to every single source that you've got or every other scene that you've got. So if you wanted that, say, across your... Um, let's go for the intro. That was intro. Intro camera. So if I wanted this across, this going across the bottom of my intro camera, what we'd do is we all we would do is we would add a scene. That's going to bring me a list of scenes up that I've already created, and we're going to go to uh, what do we call it? Come on, we call it now. Let's have a look. Text screen, weren't it? No, that's not test screen. This is the trouble. Ah, banner. That's the one which I called it. So. There it is. And all you'd have to do, if you want that in every single one of your scenes, then that's what you do. You just go and add it to each and every one of your scenes. And how you can add it is if you um, click on it, if you left click on it, left mouse, then right click on it, copy, and then go over to your next, um, next uh, camera. And all you have to do is uh, left click on it and then paste. And automatically brings it in so as easy as that and that will add every single one to um every scene that you've got so let's remove that because i don't want that in there no not rename remove Stephen. so i'm going to remove that so that's as easy as that to do a banner um you don't have to be high tech you can do it um you can do it through creating text in a different program and then importing it but that's a total different video i'm going to go through showing you how to do a basic intro and then import it into obs but that's not going to be another video because you have to create your intro uh, as a mini movie or a mini video and then import it into obs so you can't actually do that in obs you actually import in a video clip or a multimedia clip as they call it so that's that so easy is easy as we just just go back into the banner one and we'll just go over it again just to make sure you're with it. So it's obviously click on plus, add a text, GDI, then obviously fill in what you wanted, um, do your text, whatever you want to call it. You can do more than one of these. You haven't got to just do the one. You can do several of them. And what you can do is you can, in OBS, which we'll do later on in another video, you can set what they call hotkeys. So by pressing a key on your keyboard, it will bring up independently, independent different uh, medias or text banners or logos, whatever you want to do. But that's another video. So once you've done that, left click on it, then right click on it to bring up filters and then add scroll filter. So you add in your scroll filter. So now we're going to teach you how to do overlays. Overlay is where it's a background where you've got a video image over the top of it. Um, two different ways of doing this. You can either download a static image off the internet and then put that as a background and put your video over the top of that just to break it up a little bit. Or my preferred way is by doing a green screen. I'm not going to teach you how to do green screen in this video because it takes a little bit more process and I haven't got the software on this machine to do it. It's on the machine in the house. So I'll have to show you on another video how to create your overlay for green screening. But I'm going to be using one that I've already got that I use for my live streaming. So first thing we need to do is go over to the internet and find a background that we like that we can use as our overlay. So let's go over to the internet, see what we can find and uh, go from there. 
Right, so the first thing we're going to do is going to open our internet browser, whatever you use, and we're going to go in, um, type in backgrounds. And this will bring us up some images. So we're going to click on images. Don't know, cap locks on. So it's basically scrolling through to find a picture that you like. Let's go for, well, that's quite nice, I like that one. So once you've found one you like, what you need to do is right click on it and save image as. And I'm going to save this onto my OBS files. So I know where it is, it's a save. So that's as easy as that. That's our image once you've found your image. So we're now going to go back to our OBS and we're going to import it. So to import it, what we need to do is plus button on our um, sources. Image, I'm going to call it image free, or you can call it background actually, so you know what's, where it, what it is. If not, you struggle to find out what it is. So background, and now we're going to add it into our files. So we're going to go back and find it, if we can find it, wherever it is. It's in there somewhere. No, maybe not. All files. There it is, that's the one there. So, okay, so obviously it's not big enough, so we need to resize it. So we're gonna right click on our mouse, transform, fit screen. So because we've got this black bit either side, we wanna get rid of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enlarge that, and then we're gonna move it about. So we've got our full screen. So once we've got what we want, lock it in place. Um, so now we've got to import our uh, video capture device over the top of that. So we're going to plus add video capture device. Now we're going to be using the existing camera. So this is back to the first video using the existing camera. So we're going to go intro cam. There we go, intro cam. Don't need to do anything else because obviously the settings for the camera are already there. Remember back to our first, uh, the last video, all the settings are already preset because we've already set all the settings. So all we need to do is resize this to what size we want for our um for, our, for for you to be in now if you don't want all that all the bits around the sides um you can get rid of those uh while it's still red you need to hover over onto the side arrow and then the on your keyboard you need to press the alt button a l t button and while you've got the button pressed down just click the left left button and move in the side and that will reduce all that space on the side. Do exactly the same on the other side. Hover over it, Alt button, and then move it in. So what you can do now is you can resize that. And it's going to give you, get rid of you, all that rubbish on the side. But obviously, you've got to be careful because you don't wander out of the, out of the shot. So that can be done. Um, so that's the way to in, bring it in. So what we need, we've obviously got a channel name, but you can't see it when you activate it. The reason being is whatever you want on top has to be at the top of the listing in the sources. So if we move that up to our channel name up to the top, it's going to be on top. If you notice I bring it underneath my uh, intro cam, you're losing the top of the SK cross underneath the video because it's go it's on the layers between the background and the and the video image so imagine it is a cake in different layers so you want that uh channel name or your banner at the top of the of those source listings and then it will be on top of um whatever you've you've put below it uh just remember every time you add a new a new source that's going to go to the top so you then need to move your channel uh name or banner or whatever to back to the top so there we go. Want to bring a name into that? What we can do, if you want your name on it or your channel name, or obviously you've got the channel name running across both, but if you want your name on it, um, we can add a text. Obviously, I've already got these. Actually, let's create a new name. Let's go for Colin. So let's go for Colin. So we're going to create this exactly the same way as we did the um, banner. So again, you can choose what font you want. I'm going to go for the one I always go for. So, again, you can have it single color or two. No, don't want vertical. Graduate, you want it. 
Um, you can either have single color or dual colors. Let's have it. Let's go for some strange colors. Let's go for blue and pink. There you go. So we want our outline. Increase that to 10. Turn it to, whoops. Turn it to black. There we go. So what we need to resize it. And obviously, because we've got our over, because we've got our banner ground across the bottom, we don't want it across the bottom. So let's put it in the top bit out of the way. And we'll lock it off. And there you go. You've got your name on it. You've got your channel going across the bottom. Again, you can create as many banners as you want to do different things. So, yeah, that's that way. Um, this is okay. Like I said, this is great. Um, but you can get rid of all that waste around the outsides by doing what I showed you. But there, to me, there is a slightly easier way. Um, so I'm now going to show you the way that I do it, um, which obviously is with the green screening. But um, it's totally up to you. Do it how you like. You know, what I mean, a lot of people won't use overlays, but I thought I'd just teach you how to do it or show you how to do it, not teach you, show you how to do it. So let's turn all these off. We don't need these on, so turn all them off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in another image but this time we're going to bring in our um overlay green so we're going to browse again i know where it is it's in my folder so we're going to go for this one here the one i normally use for my uh hair worming so obviously it's too small so again we need to transform it and then fit to screen lock it off Right, so now you can see we've got the green screens. So if we bring in uh, our intro cam, we're not going to see that unless we bring the overlay below our camera. So what you can do, you can resize it and move it about and do this out and the other with it. But um, obviously, that's not the idea of the green screening. So let's resize this, get rid of this, put this back to original size. So you still got all that waste sitting over the top of your overlay. So with the green screen, let's turn the camera off. We're going to left click on it to bring it blue, right click on it to filters. We're going to press our plus button and we're going to add chroma key. So as soon as we add chroma key, we want the green. And as you can see now, it's got rid of the green. So it's made that green transparent. So now when we turn our camera on, Camera's on top. Let's move the overlay above the camera. Now, before it got rid of it. Now, we're behind it. So now, again, that layer situation is we've now got the camera behind the overlay. So it can get rid of all that mess and rubbish around the sides. And you, what you can do is you can zoom, if you want it, you can zoom that in to give you the best image you want. And it doesn't matter if part of the picture's sitting over, because when you put the other one on top, when you put the second picture in, it's going to get rid of, it's going to go over the top of the original. So it's going to do that it's layer situation again. So it doesn't matter. So this is my preferred way. Um, again, we can add our name. So we can move that to wherever we want. And with our banner, obviously our banner is above our uh, overlay so it's going to be there but i prefer to see my um banners over the, to the top of everything so i nurse over the top of everything so there's two ways of doing different overlays um both work but it's down to you and it depends on what you really want to be using um so it's down to your preference really but like i say i will teach you how to do green screens in another video um but there are tutorials on the internet if you want to have a look at those beforehand just to have a play with them um, i do mine in um, a piece of software called uh, microsoft publisher and uh, i always find that the easiest way to do them easy to use and uh, that's all free you save it as a jpeg so once you've saved it as a jpeg it's automatically a picture image so it's just important as we have on here so that's it for the overlays um, the next thing I'm going to teach you on the last thing of this video is picture in picture. 
Um, a lot of people use picture in picture, which is nice because it gives you two different aspects and views as the person's turning or as they're demoing. And there's several different ways you can do it. Um, and there's several different ways that you can bring them in together to make them look uh, cool as you're changing over from one picture to another picture. So uh, let's start with that. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to, I'm not going to delete these. I'm just going to turn these all off. And then uh, we will get into doing picture in picture. So I'll go black and um, I'll bring the first picture in. So the first picture I'm going to bring in is again, video capture device. We're going to use cameras that we've already got. So what I'm going to bring in is I'm going to bring my overhead cam in. There it is. So obviously it's the wrong way around. So we need to rotate it 180 degrees. Exactly the same as did in the first video. So now the other picture I want, so I want the overhead and I also want my back camera, the cameras we installed before. So we're going to go to video capture device again, add existing, rear lathe. So there you go, there it is. So as you can see, it's actually gone totally over. So we can reduce this one. So we know, if we say we're doing a bowl, we only need this sort of space here to show our bowl. So what we can do is we can reduce a lot of this off of here by doing exactly the same as I just showed you, by hovering over, pressing the ALT button, Alt, and moving that over so we can get rid of a lot of this background and foreground. So what we can do is move it over in the corner. Now we can enlarge that up like so. And we have there our picture in picture. So what we can do now is to get those cameras. The good thing with OBS is you've got different loads of scene transitions, which is this section here. Now, I always use move because I think it's a more of a, uh, a gentle, smoother transition. And the good thing with move is, is it will bring in, say, for instance, we go to um, our, let's go to our overhead or our intro camera. So we're on this one and we want to go over to, um, let's say our um, picture in picture. So we're going to go over, as soon as I click it, it's going to fade me out and bring the two in, which is what's now doing. There you go, like that. But if we want to just go to our um, overhead picture, or let's say close overhead, what it's going to do is it's going to fade in one and fade out the other, which is quite clever. So we're now going to click overhead, lathe, close. So there you go, it's brought those in together. So when you go to the other one, if you go to overhead and back, it's going to bring in the overhead in as well and fade that one out. And this is the clever thing about it, that it will swap them about. So as you can see here, I've got overhead and tail stock, which is the one I use quite often. And it gradually fades out the rear and brings in the tail stock. It's just quite clever and I quite like the look at it. It's quite like that. It's not really in your face. It's just subtle. So if I want to go to tail stock and overhead, it will just swap them over like so. So it's a nice, sweet, gentle trans uh, transaction between the two. And it always gives that nice, sweet effect. So if you go to something different, let's say to fade, and we go to overhead and tail stock, it's going to just gently fade them over. Again, it works. It's just down to your preference. So if you went to overhead and back lathe, it's going to, again, f fade them over. But the trouble you got with is because we're deactivating cameras when we're not using them, you get that stuttery jump. So watch when I go between overhead and tail stock. The tail stock is going to come in quite quick and then gently fade in because the tail stock camera has been deactivated. Did you see it? It's it glitches. So the only way you're going to get rid of that is if you increase the duration. So the reason I use the move is because 3000 milliseconds is enough time to tell that camera to turn back on before it comes in. So now if I do what I was doing before, I've got no, there's no stuttery glitching. The camera's got plenty of time to turn itself on before it's coming in. As you can see there, turn these lights. So that's the benefits of using move rather than fade or swipe.
um, if you can increase the duration, but what you're doing is you're, then it's taken longer to go from camera to camera. Um, so, you I mean, that's the that's the disadvantages of deactivating your cameras, cam, cameras, cameras, but the advantage of deactivating your cameras are you've not got, like me, I've got eight cameras going all at the same time. So that's the advantages. Um, but it's down to your preference. To me personally, I'd rather have the cameras deactivate, no hassle, less strain on your computer, and just give that a little bit more duration time to um, to pick up the, the, the slack. So that's it for this one. We've covered banners, scrolling banners, uh, overlays, picture in picture, and also touched a little bit on the uh, transition of uh, scenes. So uh, I think there's going to be maybe a couple more because there's loads more stuff to learn. Um, in the next video, I think I'm going to spend a bit of time showing you how to set your streaming settings and your recording settings because both are slightly different um, depending on how quick your internet speed is for your streamers depending on how quick you can push a signal out and how good a signal you're going to push out and what size picture um, and on the video settings um, depending on how much storage space you got on your pc is depending on how big a format you're recording in obviously the bigger the format the better picture quality you're going to get but obviously if your computer hasn't got that storage space you can't you can't record so we're going to touch on them in the next video and maybe a few other little bits and bits so anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed uh thanks for coming over and watching if this is your first time to the channel then please think about subscribing um other than that please smash that like and share button and uh, have a great weekend take care speak to you soon and bye for now bye